Hi there, my name is Nils with learn to diy and in this video I'll be showing you how to make a simple but sturdy weight rack for your dumbbells. Now typically what I'm going to recommend is that you go to a Home Depot or a Lowe's and you can find some three foot sections of angle iron, just the same stuff, and it's ready to go, it's cut to length, and that's all there is to it. You can, however, save a few bucks by going to a metal yard and going through their as is section. Usually they have cutoffs that you can use like these guys here. So I've got two of these. These are actually a little shorter than what I probably wanted, but they should do the trick. Now I happen to have a cutoff saw that I'm gonna to use to cut this, but you could actually cut through this with either a hacksaw or a small four inch cutoff wheel. Either one of those will work just fine. Because I have it, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Uh, but first I gotta get my measurements and make sure these are cut exactly in half. The idea is you want to end up with four of the lengths of angle iron that are all the same size, which is now, hopefully, <laughs> what I've got here. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So once you've got your angle iron set, we're now going to move on to the four by sixes. And the way I've designed this is that these are all at a 15 degree angle, so they're kind of facing you when you set your dumbbells down on the rack, and then it should look pretty good. So we're going to put the saw away and move on to our four by sixes. First thing I want to do is get my longest measurement. In this case, it's two foot seven. So I'm going to mark that. I'm going to use my speed square and you can use any method you need to to get a 15 degree angle on this, but speed square is pretty comfortable for me. So I'm going to put my edge of my square right at the line and then tilt it or pivot it until I line up the 15 degree mark with the edge of the board, which is right there. Then from there, I can just draw my line. So that's a 15 degree angle, and that will be the taller piece of one of the two legs. So next I'm gonna use my circular saw, and it's important that you get as much depth as you can. So usually there's a depth adjustment level, or lever. So I'll put that up like that. So I'm gonna Line that up right with the other cut, just kind of eyeball that and see where that goes. Take my 15, draw my line. Okay, there we go. And there we go, not a bad cut. And there is my first leg section there, like so, looks good. So that's how you would cut it with a circular saw. If you have a miter saw that can handle this, that'll make light work of it. That's what I have, that's what I'm gonna use. And there's our two legs looking good. Okay, next up we're gonna take the longer two of each of our sections and we're gonna cut out a notch here. And then we're gonna come in 3 eighths of an inch on both sides. So we're gonna mark this at 3 eighths. Okay. The way we can do this to get just the right depth is we'll set our circular saw to an inch and a half. That's the size of cut we wanna make. And I don't know if you can see right down in here, but as I move my table up and down, I can set it to an inch and a half and lock it in place. So then it's just a matter of dragging it across, making sure I'm lining up here. Okay, so that's an inch and a half deep. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Like I did with the miter saw, if you've got a means by which you can make this easier, by all means go for it. And so I'm going to use my bandsaw here. 
to help me out. Now the last cut we have to make into the wood is a little recess right here. So I'm gonna match up my longest and second longest boards here like this, these two. And then where I've made my little notch, I need to notch into the longest one here a little bit so that the angle iron still has enough room. Cause obviously if I try to put the angle iron in here, this little notch here is too shallow. Just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna go a full inch and one eighth. And that should be the exact measurement. If you cut this back a little bit, you can adjust, but we can always test fit and see. And then I'm gonna set the depth of my blade to just over an inch, right there. Now the test is whether a piece of angle iron slides in there. There we go, beautiful. That's what we're going for. We'll do the same thing on our other tall piece. Okay, so I've purchased some of this flat bar that's been punched, and this makes it easy to drive screws into it. So I'm gonna make sure the bottoms of these are all lined up really well, then we'll get our measurement. We're gonna start with one from the front of the smallest leg to the bottom of the largest leg. I'll cut it in the middle of this hole 17 here. If you have a clamp, it would be a good idea to clamp those together. If not, you can kind of hold them in place. Since I have clamps, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so having nine of these on here should do the job. Now I've clamped down our taller and second tallest one. I'm gonna to try to run this next strip roughly parallel to the first one. And that looks good right there. I'm gonna cut it right to here. And again, we'll just use the hacksaw for that. Now that we've got the insides of these guys done, on the outside, if you cut the last bit of flat bar in half, you should have just enough to span both of these. And I just need at least one hole, one full hole ideally, on either side. If you can get a little bit more than that, even better. Again, this is a good idea if you can put something between these to clamp them a little bit. That's a, a good thing. Good. Okay, now for the fun part. Next thing we need to do is to actually drill some holes through the angle iron. You can buy some metal drilling bits. This is a titanium bit. We're gonna just take one of these bits here, get it close to the end, and then start going for it. You wanna put a little bit of pressure down there and it should be able to work its way through. Savings coming up, and there we go. So we'll do that times 12, uh, two on either end. You can always check here. I mean, that's what we want. We want to do one a little bit in here, maybe three quarters of an inch, and then another one about three quarters of an inch from the other side. Okay, we're nearly done here. Now we get to put our angle iron onto the racks. And because they have these nice little shelves, gravity is working with us, which is awesome. 
Now, uh, one option you can do is you can drill out these guys here and put them in first. And honestly, I messed up and forgot to do that. So I came up with kind of, I hope, a creative solution to fix that. I took the pieces of wood that we cut out of these and then I matched up the grain here and then sanded them down into little wedges so that we can, we can kind of wedge those into place. Because really all we're going for here is just to keep this snug. So that's not gonna go anywhere. I'll do the same thing with this side. And next we'll take our drill and screws and we get to attach the last bars, all the bars. Okay, that is all she wrote. We now have a very solid weight rack. So as you can see, I think this turned out really well. It's a good looking weight rack, it's very sturdy. And the cool thing is you can adjust this to the length that you need. So we have this kind of shorter angle iron on ours, but if you use the three foot stuff that you can purchase pre-cut at the store, that'll be a little bit longer and give you some more space. You can even use some angle iron from the metal yard like I mentioned earlier and do another foot or two if you need to. If you're using that 1 8 inch stock, it's gonna be pretty sturdy. Now if you wanna check out some of our other videos on some cool things that we build for around the house as well as home improvements and DIY projects, you can check those out in the playlist right here. And otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.